App Platform is a product by DigitalOcean that is a platform as a service. Now, this is a really cool product because it lets us focus on code, not service, just like it says right here. And the biggest thing where we can see this in action is if we hit launch your app, you can see that we can deploy directly from a GitHub repository. And in the past, we would have had to create a droplet, SSH in, set up our Git keys, and clone that way. Here, we can just say, okay, well, I want to go grab a repo. Now, let's talk about platform as a service and what modern day apps look like now. Well, if we go here, we have an app platform guest book demo app, and I can write a message here. And if I click add message, that will add it and it gets added into our kind of guest book right here. So an app like this is gonna have a front end, which is a React application. It's gonna have a back end, which in this case is a Laravel API. And then it's also gonna have a database. So the cool, cool thing about app platform is we can deploy the Laravel API and then we can go ahead and attach a front end to it and then attach a database to it all from within the same exact dashboard. So let's go ahead and say, okay, we want to deploy guestbook Laravel and you'll see the guestbook react app is the front end. We'll do the Laravel app right now. I'll hit next and we're going to need some settings here. So we have our region. I'm going to go for New York and what is really cool about this is we can auto deploy code changes. So we can say here, I want to deploy the master branch. And every time we push to this master branch, go ahead and deploy to DigitalOcean. I'll click next here. PHP is detected. It's going to be of type web service. And we'll talk more about the types in a second. Environment variables, we need to go ahead and add some right here. App URL is one that Laravel needs. And our URL for our application can be grabbed by this variable right here. And app platform will go ahead and create that for us. I'll click next and app key is the other one we want. And I'll go ahead and paste that in right there. The other thing about this application is that we're gonna have a database. So we can go ahead and go down here and click add a database. And this is all in the creation phase of this application. So we'll click add a database. We're going to go for a dev database. You can also click on an existing database that you have from your DigitalOcean account. I'm going to click with the dev database. We'll name it DB and I'll click add database. So that's going to spin up a brand new Postgres database with this app. So we're going to deploy two things here. And in the app platform world, we call these components. So here we have our PHP app, which is a web service. We have our Postgres database right here. And now that the database is gonna come with us, we can actually say, okay, let's add in some more environment variables because Laravel needs these environment variables to connect to our database. So we'll need a few. In Laravel world, we say DB connection is PG SQL. And then we're gonna add a bunch more real quick. Okay, so we're gonna need database URL. And if we want to reference one of our other components, we have our web service PHP component here. We want to reference our Postgres database here. So I'll go up here. You can reference it by using these for the variable. And I say DB dot and DB is what we had named it when we created it. And this will reference that component. I'll go ahead and say database URL. And you can find all of these in the docs for what these are named for the variables. I'll add DB host and let's just keep going all the way down the left side, DB port db database what else do we need we need db username and one more for db password okay and we'll go ahead and grab all of these right here i'm just going to paste all these in okay so this one is going to be host name this one is going to be port this is going to be database right here this is username and password. So with all of that, we have all of the environment variables required to launch this Laravel API and connect it to a database. So we'll go down here and build commands. We want to compose or install. And when we run it, we're gonna have PHP artisan migrate happen. So that is going to migrate on every code deploy so that our app and database are up to date.
Okay, so we can close this now. We can close this now and let's see our app in action. We'll go down here and hit next. Now we can select from pricing. Basic is good for prototypes. Pro is good for production level applications. Since this is a basic prototype account, we are going to set this app to be a basic. Then down here, you're going to select a container. So once we select a plan for our overall application, then we're going to go look at our containers. You can see there's a $5, $10, $20. And the cool thing about this is we can scale up to any of these or add any number of containers after we have deployed this app. So right now we have a container, which is our PHP Laravel container. And then we have a dev database for $7. Let's go ahead and launch this basic app. So we have building a service for the guestbook Laravel, which is that GitHub repo we have. While we're here, we can actually go view our logs. And this is going to take us to the deployments. And then you can see everything that's happening when we're deploying this Laravel application. We can see all of the composer packages getting installed. All right, so it looks like our application is done deploying, but it looks like it's in production. So our migration command didn't work. So we're going to have to go back and add the dash dash force flag on it so that the migration happens. But we can also go up here and go into our console. And here we can directly talk to our application from our console here. So we can say PHP artisan migrate. And I'll say force here. All right, so we have our migration working. So that means it was able to connect to our Postgres database. We can say PHP artisan db seed so that we can seed this database now. And we'll say yes here. Okay, so we've added some dummy data to our database. So we can go up here and see, okay, here's our application. Let's click this. And there's our Laravel app. That looks good there. I'm going to go API slash messages, which is our endpoint. And here we go. Here's our Laravel API connected to our Postgres database. All right, so we were able to deploy a Laravel API all from a GitHub repo. Next up, we need to add the front end to this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our front end. And here, back in our dashboard, you go to components. We can see that there's the PHP app and also our database right here. So here's our database. Here's all of our connection information about that database. We can go ahead and create a component. And I can add a service, which is what our PHP app is. I can add a worker, our static site, or a database. In this case, I'm going to add a static site. And we get to deploy from GitHub again. So I'm going to add our guest book React, which is a front end. I'll click Next here. We'll go ahead and deploy that master branch. Click Next. All right, so we have a static site detected, which is really nice. We have environment variables right here, which I don't think our front end needs. And we have our build command, which is yarn build. Let's go ahead and do this. And we'll talk about HTTP routes right after this. Once again, we'll click on a plan, but if we have a paid application and we want to add a static site to it, it's going to add no monthly cost. So static sites are free when you add them onto a dynamic app. I'll click launch static site and we'll let this run. Cool. So now we have our site deployed. So we still have our backend site working. Let's refresh this. All right. And we still have our front end, but our front end lives at a different location. So if I click this right here, our front end lives at an HTTP route for forward slash guestbook react. So if I click this, copy that, I'll go over here, go to guestbook react. That's where our react app is going to live. Now this app isn't going to work because it's trying to grab resources from the root URL. So we have to change some things. Let's say the Laravel app. We're going to go back here, HTTP routes. We're going to change this to forward slash app. So I'll save that. And then under our environment variables, I'm going to change our app URL to forward slash app. So our API is going to live at forward slash app at this same URL. And then we can go over to our React app and change our HTTP route to the forward slash. So it's just at the root of our application. And you can see it right here. Guestbook Laravel on DigitalOcean dot app, and that'll be where our React app lives because we expect the static site to kind of live at the root, and then the API can be something else. 
the last thing we need to do for this application is we need to go into our environment variables for our React app and tell it where our API lives. So we're going to say React app API URL is going to be, and we'll say right here, app underscore URL slash app slash API, because that's where our Laravel app lives is at app. And then the API in the Laravel application lives at slash API. And we don't need this database URL on the front end. So I'll delete that. And I'll click save here and we'll let everything build and everything should run perfectly. All right, we have our deployment in. So now if we go to this URL right here, we should be able to see our React front end because it's at forward slash. And then just check where our Laravel API is. We go to forward slash app forward slash API. And then actually, let's just check if our Laravel app is up. It is. And then if we go to forward slash API slash messages, that's where our main endpoint is. And that's what's grabbing from this React front end. So here's our front end again, our React app. We are deployed from GitHub. Let's add a message there. And here we go. It gets added to our API through a post request. And we pull all the new messages using a get request to our Laravel API. So all in all, this is really, really cool because with a couple clicks from a couple GitHub repos, we have three components that are going to make up this full stack app. We have a PHP backend, which is a Laravel API. We have a React front end right here, and we have a database that is a Postgres database. So all three of those things put together makes it really cool. We can see the health of our apps. We can see some insights as far as usage for each of these components. And that's App Platform in a nutshell.